I can never make up my mind. What do you like best? Cheeseburger! Right. I can't decide either. Before McDonald's stopped counting the number of people served back in 1994 when they hit 99 billion, before James Franco penned his love letter, McDonald's was there for me when no one else was, before the global empire had everyone asking what the hell is Grimace? What's this? And I hope you do. Oops, too slow. Before Ray Kroc franchised the business in 1954, turning a single restaurant in San Bernardino into a global empire now worth an estimated $130 billion. Before two McDonald's brothers turned their father's hot dog stand into a burger restaurant with a super efficient assembly line kitchen, the McDonald's closed their successful drive in and set out to reinvent the restaurant business. McDonald's started with a humble food stand near Monrovia Airport run by Patrick McDonald. When it first opened in 1937, it wasn't called McDonald's and it didn't even sell hamburgers. But Patrick's sons Dick and Mac would later move the stand to San Bernardino and created the first McDonald's restaurant. The kitchen was so efficiently run that entrepreneur Ray Kroc saw the potential for a nationwide chain. One that he would go on to own himself after cutting Dick and Mac out of the business, and let's just say the boys weren't loving it. I'm loving it. What's going on, guys? My name is Michael McCrudden, documenting the rise of McDonald's here for you on Before They Were Famous. Now, I know these videos are usually about people, and you might be surprised to see one on a corporation. But as old man Mitt Romney would say, Corporations are people, my friend. Let us know in the comments down below if you want to see videos on other companies. Do you want to see one on Apple or Walmart, or how about Starbucks? Let us know in the comments down below. How about one on Google? I mean, they allowed this channel to happen. Mm, let me know if you want to see it. You know where. They weren't interested in doing it themselves. Well, I said, why don't you get somebody to do it? They said, well, we don't know anybody who want to do it. I said, well, how about me? The first McDonald's, then called McDonald's Barbecue, opened on May 15th, 1940 in San Bernardino, California. It was run by Richard or Dick and Maurice or Mac McDonald who had moved to Hollywood in the late 1930s in hopes of becoming big shot producers. But the only jobs they could land in the movie business were as handymen or set movers. So they decided, what the heck, if you can't make it in Hollywood, why be here? Three years prior, in 1937, their father, Patrick McDonald, or Old Man McDonald, who didn't have a farm, what he had was a small food stand by the airport in Monrovia, California. The stand was called the Airdrome and mostly sold hot dogs, but by the time Patrick turned the business over to his sons, 10 cent hamburgers had already been added to the menu. Mac and Dick, they moved the whole building to San Bernardino to convert it into the McDonald's barbecue restaurant, but that restaurant was still nothing like the McDonald's we know today. It was a car hop drive-in that sold slow cooked barbecue beef, ham and pork sandwiches. They also sold tamales, chili, baked beans and even peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Those were like the early Happy Meals, I bet. Like most other drive-ins that were popping up on the west coast, it was an immediate success. Californians delighted in getting full menu service without ever leaving their beloved automobiles. But by the end of World War II, the brothers found that by far the most popular item on their menu was the hamburger. It made up 80% of their sales, so in 1948 they decided to overhaul their already successful business, closing their doors for three months in order to change everything. By the time the boys reopened, they had fired their 20 car hops, and those were the babes. They streamlined their menu down to just nine items and began serving everything in paper wrappings and cups so they would no longer have to wash any dishes because time is money. Nothing else matters. The brothers also completely renovated the way their kitchen worked. Inspired by Henry Ford's assembly line method of building cars, each member of their new 12 person staff would now focus on specific tasks and much of the food was pre-assembled. All hamburgers were cooked and dressed the same and customers who wanted something a little special, they wanted something changed, well they would have to wait. No! Before this burger factory had doubled the brothers' profits. Oh, lads, sweet, sweet, buckets three. In 1952, they hired Stanley Clark Meston to redesign their building and add those signature golden arches. Fun fact: them golden arches, well, they remind men and women of boobs, and well, most people like those. So out of sheer luck, them arches, well, they drew in more and more patrons. 
Soon they set up a handful of franchises in California and Arizona, but the franchising wouldn't really explode until after Ray Kroc visited the restaurant in 1954 to sell them a milkshake mixer. Kroc had to see for himself the type of place that needed to churn out up to 40 milkshakes at a time. Ray bought the rights to franchise the restaurant across the country and opened his first McDonald's in Des Plaines, Illinois in 1955. One of his first hires was future McDonald's CEO Fred Turner. His job at the time, grill man. Yeah, McDonald's did him good. I'm loving in 1959, Ray had over 100 McDonald's restaurants, but he didn't always see eye to eye with Dick and Mac McDonald's. For one thing, he hated that he couldn't make any changes to the business without their written approval. So in 1961, he bought the company from them for $2.7 million, enough so that each brother would be able to take home a million after taxes. That was over 50 years ago. So a million dollars back then, I'm thinking that's like 10 today. So they did pretty good, but not as good as Ray would do. He also agreed to pay them an annual royalty of 1.9%, but that was a handshake agreement. And then brothers, well they would never see any of that money. Ray was annoyed that the brothers refused to give him the original San Bernardino restaurant. They decided instead to give it to a founding employee and renamed it Big N. In revenge, well Ray, he opened a McDonald's around the block and drove Big M out of business. Why you little guy? Out of the way, Ray thought it was time to create a mascot for his growing franchise. At the time, Bozo the Clown was the most popular television show, so Ray just went ahead and hired the actor Willard Scott, who played Bozo, to come up with an original clown character, and from there, well, Ronald McDonald was born. But back then, he looked a little creepy. I know we're going to be friends too, because I like to do everything boys and girls like to do. Now, in complete control of the company and with his mascot in tow, Ray got to work expanding and developing the company over the next decade. In 1962, he opened the first McDonald's with seating in Denver, Colorado. In 1967, the first McDonald's outside of the US was opened in Richmond, British Columbia, that's Canada, and the Big Mac was introduced the following year. McDonald's new Big Mac sandwich for the bigger than average appetite. McDonald's is your kind of place. In 1966, another professional clown, Coco the Clown, who had worked as a circus performer, well he was hired to recreate Ronald McDonald and not make him so creepy of a character. The result is this tall glass of yellow and red water that you know and love today. Oh, what a beautiful day for fun. What would you like to do? Party. Party. That's a wonderful idea. In 1971, McDonald's went global, opening locations in Tokyo, Amsterdam, Munich, and Sydney. Now that's quite the accomplishment, but there was no slowing down. In 1973, they introduced the Egg McMuffin, and then the first drive through opened in Arizona two years later. In 1979, they saw the birth of the Happy Meal, with the chicken nuggets being added to the menu in 1980. Throughout the 70s, McDonald's focused a lot not only on commercials, but television shows. They gave their beloved Ronald McDonald a home known as McDonald Land, where he had friends like the Fries Guys, the Hamburglar, and Grimace. You, the, where's the Coke? Who at one point was initially evil Grimace. And then they kind of made him happy Grimace, but at the end of the day, no one really knows what the hell Grimace is. He was supposed to be like some kind of milkshake or a taste bud, and it's just really weird. Oh, oh, oh my! Ah, I've been picked for the McDonald's Land Beauty Contest. By the time Ray Kroc passed away in 1983, there were over 7,500 McDonald's restaurants earning $8 billion a year. Ray had also become a philanthropist, supporting research and treatment of alcoholism, diabetes, and other diseases. He also founded Ronald McDonald House, a charity to create, find, and support programs that directly improve the health and well-being of children. As for the rest of the story, well, you know, that's pretty much it, because this is before they were famous. Actually, hold up a sec. We could make an after they were famous on McDonald's, because there's a lot of stuff that's happened with this company, like there was the whole Super Size Me fiasco. Also, they you know changed their menu and they started including some health conscious options, and some of them did do so well. Also, remember when they did pizza? So much we could talk about on an after they're famous. Let me know if that's something you want me to do. Also, let me know if there are other corporations that you want me to do before they're famous on. I think Starbucks would be cool, as would be Google. You let me know what you want to hear. Comments down below. I'm loving it. I'm exhausted. That was a lot of work. Gotta stop eating them burgers. A business genius, he is not.